All right, folks. <clears throat> well, what could possibly be in these pouches? Well, some of you have an idea if you guys have been watching my videos. But uh, what kind of knife would cost you five, six, and possibly seven hundred dollars? And who in their right mind would pay that much for a knife? <clears throat> and why would you pay that much for a, a knife? Well, there's many reasons why I would answer yes. And there's many reasons why at times I think that yes, I might possibly be crazy. But for maybe investment purposes, now we have custom knife makers that produce some, of, some very beautiful knives. And these beautiful knives um, tend to go up in value. And they don't necessarily have to die to do that. Um, so it could be for an investment purpose. Or it could be for the fact that you buy it for $500 and if you need to sell it, you can go back and sell it for what you purchased it for. If not, maybe a, a slight price more. Because most custom knife makers, there's a waiting list. So in order to get ahead of the line, you can purchase one of these knives um, from me without uh, waiting, you know, the six week, six week waiting period. So you can say, wow, I really like that particular knife. How much do you want for it? And I could say, well, uh, I bought it for $500. I'll sell it to you for uh, about $550. That's a pretty good investment on my part, I would say. Uh, nothing on the market right now does that. Uh, that's a better return than gold will give you, right? And I guess gold's the biggest thing out here right now. Um, but I don't buy these to resell them as of now. I do buy them because it is perfection. Absolute perfection. Um, I find that buying older knives and reselling them um, is a better profit margin. Uh, you can pick up an old knife for two or three bucks and it could be worth close to five or six hundred dollars at times. And I've done that on a few occasions. So it's pretty hard to beat that profit margin. So uh, let's look at some of my custom knives that I do have. Um, my, my favorite maker uh, for now is Todd Davison. I have four of his knives. And the reason I like them is because for what you get for the price, um, and I'm not going to say how much I actually purchased each individual one for, but I would say that they're worth 600 but I didn't necessarily pay that much. I might have got them uh, from other sources than just him, and I might have gotten some of these on trades also. So it really, it's really not that important to discuss that. But what are you looking at when... You're looking at a custom knife. Now, in my knife porn video, you did see these knives lined up on one of my desks. And uh, you can see that uh, the beauty of these is just incredible. Now, what, what do you expect out of a custom knife? Well, what I expect is... Um, milled liners and what does that mean okay milled liners are your knife liners right in here and if you can see that now I am working on the uh, whole close-up thing if you're looking at the liners here if you look at the liners you can see that there's a relief right about there now what would that be for well, when you close your knife, it has a bad tendency of scratching all this up on your average knife. And the reason why is because you don't have that relief there. So when you close your knife, okay, you just paid 500 bucks for this knife and you, and you open it up and you go to open it and you're like, my goodness, I just scratched the hell out of it. And that can be kind of upsetting. So one of the things I expect from a custom knife maker is that there are milled liners here. Um, I like some jeweling on the inside and if you look closely on this particular knife you can see that there is some jeweling in there and you can see that that, that is all nicely done. Um, I like to have bushings installed and this has this does have bushings I don't know if he used phosphorus or not. 
Um, I don't even know if those are actually bushings. They might be milled into the liner itself, which would probably even be better. I expect that everything fits perfectly, that there's no gaps, no wiggle. I expect that there to be a half stop. I expect a half stop on a custom knife. And I expect it to be even and flush also when that half stop is installed. I expect it to be even and flush in every aspect, in every position, excuse me. I expect everything to be pinned on. And this knife is just pure perfection. Everything about it, it's like a I don't know, it's like a, what, a German watch. Um, it's, everything's just absolutely perfect. There, you cannot find any issues with these knives or problems or any type of um, fit and finish issues. All right, so we can go to the next one I got here. And uh, this particular one is California Burwood which is just beautiful and it's just a gorgeous knife and this one is buffalo horn and I hope that my camera is uh, adjusting to these close-ups it's kinda of something new I'm trying and if you look at this one it also has your half stop, but look at that Warren Cliff blade. This is just awesome. And I do open these very gently because some of these are for investment purposes. This knife is just gorgeous. So some things, you know, you buy a, you know, some people, for instance, their value system is different. Um, I bought myself a Honda Accord. Um, I don't see the reason to buy a BMW and pay $5,000 extra just for a name, in my opinion. But I, I'm sure people could argue that also, uh, because my value set is different uh, than some people's. Everybody has a different value set. Uh, the very same person that will say, man, you are crazy for paying that much money, will turn around and buy the latest DVD um, at the video store, which I think is completely uh, a waste of money when I can download it for free off the internet. Uh, $25 on a DVD that's going to completely drop in value is a waste of money in my opinion. But that's my opinion. So it's not to insult anybody that maybe possibly has a DVD collection, but for investment purposes it's a fact that DVD collections are not going to be profitable unless you're purchasing them at wholesale. Um, but life isn't all about money but at the same time I do have a family and a child and I, I'm not made of money so I try to have my hobby um, not only is my hobby collecting beautiful things beautiful knives it's also um, I don't want it to be a burden on my family so I also try to make some money uh, with my knife collection because knowledge is power and the ability to obtain uh, collectibles at garage sales and stuff like that and resell them is, is a profitable uh, business. This one is Amber Bone. Beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. And this was the first one I purchased. And there's only one knife like this in the world and I'm holding it. That's another thing that's really nice about custom made knives. Um, the metal on these are ATS-34, which is a super steel, which is, which a lot of custom knife makers use ATS-34, and that's because it does take on a very nice polish. These are all hand sanded, hand polished, everything's done by hand. And all these have jeweling on the inside. Gosh, this is just an awesome knife. Beautiful. And the half stop is so powerful on these that you can literally, you feel, it's like a locking mechanism. That's the way knives used to, used to be. And I'm going to cut out here and I'll make a part two also.